Hello everyone, welcome to the lecture on paradigms in development communication. The lecture is a part of your paper on development communication. The basic objective of this module is to give you an idea of what is meant by the paradigms of development communication. A paradigm basically means a model or pattern that helps in understanding a concept better. So paradigms of development communication will explicitly or implicitly reflect the various basic views associated with development communication. These paradigms are basically correlated with shared assumptions of the development communications. What we mean to state here is that the paradigms or theories rest on views on components like development, empowerment and communication. If you recollect then in the module where we discussed historical perspective, we notice that communication scholars and experts tend to split in terms of their views regarding development communication. The opinion classes are segmented into those who perceive development communication as an organizational delivery mechanism and those who view it as an inseparable aspect of culture and social change. By now we are aware of the fact that expansion of economics of the third world developing nations has always been a concern of developed world since the past few decades. The historical perspective of development also gave an idea how the economic aspect had led to the creation of new paradigmatic models. The paradigms of development communication are specifically clusters of theories and assumptions for providing a common orientation to the researchers working in some particular area. What is interesting to note here is that the paradigms and paradigmatic ways of development communication have witnessed considerable changes over decades. Such changes have always been considered significant as they represent that the process of formulating and testing hypotheses have been working. Emergence of Paradigms of Development before we delve deeper into the paradigms of development communication, let us have a brief understanding of its emergence in different phases. The emergence of models or paradigms indicates that we are adding to the existing knowledge or cases. It is evident that the process of changes in paradigms needs rethinking of old themes and application of newer perspectives. What is challenging is to measure the implication of new emerging paradigm every time. Thomas Kuhn suggested the first prevalent notion of paradigm revolution in 1962. As we discussed earlier, a paradigm was mainly proposed to define the nature of scientific debates. The concept of paradigm is loosely associated with the notion of giving a prominent worldview. In the past 40 or 50 years, a number of modest and comprehensive theories have emerged illustrating the role of communication in development. The present language of development communication has summarized all these theories as dominant paradigm. Time and again the paradigm shifts have occurred through epistemological and logical perspective. Each and every single paradigm is likely to respond to the different socio-political agendas. The different development communication viewpoints functioning in developing nations are generally reviewed 
analytically in terms of various aspects such as recognized cause of underdevelopment, efforts of developing nations toward development, advent of alternate paradigm, scope of communication in development process. However, these existing perspectives do not reflect a complete theory of development. The perspective of development communication have changed as per the changing dynamics of development. Further, it also changed according to the changing roles of the medium of interpersonal as well as mass media communication. What affected the changes in the development perspectives was the technological revolution in the mass communication process. Apart from all these aspects, some experts have argued that the core elements of dominant paradigm in any society are persistent growth and prosperity in all aspects like science and technology, economy and property rights. So we can say here that in the past four decades or so, Two major approaches to development have emerged. Dominant paradigm of development, which was a very western approach. New alternate paradigm of development, which was more of participatory non-western approach. During the passing phase of the dominant paradigm to the emerging new alternate paradigm, Several other approaches were brought into the forefront by international communities and these are dependency model and interdependent model based on dependency theory and basic need model which is based on the marginality theory. These approaches of development mainly addresses to questions like how to do development work, how did the problems of underworld start and how do we address them and thirdly why do developments initiatives does not yield effective results in developing nations this module will discuss the dominant paradigm that was endorsed by the developed countries as well as the alternate paradigm that was not specific to any particular nation yet was globally acceptable what we can state here is that every paradigm of development has implications and it varies from one nation to other. Each paradigm has occurred as a criticism of the insufficiencies of the earlier dominant paradigms. However, it does not imply that the emergence of new paradigms undermine the practical applications and theoretical principles of already existing paradigms. They remain operative and it is one of the reasons why in a developing nations we find two or more different paradigms functioning side by side. We can illustrate this point with the help of a small example. In a country like India which is predominantly agricultural based support agencies using technology for Disseminating information to commercial farmers can be cited as one example where different dimensional models are into operation. Each operative paradigm of nation suggests new dimensions, basically restructuring of socio-political priorities. Considering the historical perspective of the media, some biasness does exist in every paradigm. However, communication experts look for validity in each paradigm by making adjustments. So what is to be thought here is that how to formulate one such model of development communication that would bring together the best of every paradigm that existed or is still existing into a consistent approach. Framework of Dominant Paradigm As discussed above, during the 1950s and 1960s, the Western model of development was predominant 
Everett Rogers in 1960 termed this model as the dominant paradigm of development. This dominant model laid emphasis on the modernization aspect. It indicated that modernization of any society could be achieved through increased productivity, industrialization and economic growth as the only way to measure development was through per capita income or gross national product, in short GNP. It encouraged urbanization, establishment of capital, concentrated technologies and heavy industries, centralized planning and maintaining the indigenous factors of growth. What appears from this, these statements is that the dominant paradigm attempted to encourage development through the acceptance of technological advance and innovations. It tried to bring in a shift from the traditional primitive agricultural society which was quite static and rigid. It promoted industrialized and socially active mobile nation. This approach was supported by scholars like Daniel Lerner in 1958 and Wilbur Schramm in 1962. They full-fledged advocated the roles of technology for development by identifying its possibilities. For understanding the full scopes of development, we need to know what causes underdevelopment. Now in the following paragraphs, we will be discussing the possible reasons of underdevelopment and the efforts of a developing nation to overcome such constraints. While advocating the scopes of technology supporting dominant paradigm in development, the experts dealing with development communities also argued about the attributed reasons of underdevelopment, especially in a developing nation. They pointed out that underdevelopment in a developing country is not mainly because of any external cause. Rather, it was because of the internal causes embedded deeply in the social structure. In this context, Rogers in 1962 and Beltran in 1976 stressed that social bodies like heavy bureaucracy, caste, class system, government authorities, etc. are to be held responsible for resistant in modernization and positive developmental change. However, other scholars like Daniel Lerner in 1958 and Wilbur Schramm in 1962 argued that constraints start at the individual level and they are to be blamed for posing limitations in the social change. The conditions of any underdevelopment country are matter of concern but it is also to be noticed that developing countries are putting in all efforts to overcome the constraints. These efforts include promotion of capital, concentrated technologies and establishment of heavy industry. Lerner in 1958 argued that the individuals are responsible for constraints as not much efforts was made on the part of individuals to change the social scenario. So according to him, the first priority should be the modernization of the existing age-old stern traditional values at the individual levels. For the liberalization of the social structure, a change in the individual's attitude and beliefs is required and here he brought in the role of mass media. He pointed out that mass media can help in bring the development and change by creating awareness and by inculcating urban values for modernization among the individuals. Rogers in 1976 noted that a restructuring of all the society is needed for facilitating development process in the developing nations. Well, a number of limitations were also observed in the efforts of the developing nation towards development. Firstly, 
the initiation of capital intensive and technology based industrialization affected the indigenous cottage based industry the cottage industries are also considered as a heritage of rural traditions it is a fact that developing countries are largely rural and dependent on the skilled artists of the traditional arts and handicrafts what was unfortunate was that even though most of the developing nations are agriculture based yet they did not concentrate much on the development of the agriculture sector as a result the rural masses mostly unemployed and disconnected because of the industrial growth and fading out of hereditary cottage occupations the rural masses became disconnected because the low concentrations on agriculture generated low agricultural returns this was pointed out by rogers in 1976 as the root cause of increased rural urban migration that further deteriorated that urban balance by increasing congestion food shortages and poor slum conditions consequently the developing nation witnessed stagnation in the process of development the development theorist came up with the two major lines of criticism for the stagnation in development in developing countries firstly the initiative of social change were believed to be more focused on individuals and not the social system secondly the efforts that were directed towards individuals were mostly elite upper class based and did not involve the people at grassroots level As we noticed above the Rogers in 1976 believed in changing the social structure for development here in this context he argued that individuals and their attitudes can only change when there is a change in the larger social structure in the context of second line of criticism the development efforts were based on elite class based some scholars observe that the number of modernized elite was very limited in developing countries and government policies aimed at this a small fraction of the society would not yield desired beneficial feedback concerning the larger society limitations of dominant paradigm there are certain drawbacks associated with the dominant paradigm of development and this section will discuss it what we have seen above is that this paradigm had attributed social structure and individual attitudes for underdevelopment in the third world what it failed to recognize was the external conditions restraining development the external conditions might be international economic domination excessively dependency on technology assisted programs increasing vulnerability of rural masses due to increased industrializations etc it is not necessary that one model or approach of development will uniformly work in every nation as the implementation of such models depends on the available resources so the dominant model also failed to distinguish between developing nations with rich resources than those with lower resources the needs of one nation might be entirely different from the other and thus might need a different approach for best benefits communication flow in this regard was supposedly one very indication communication flow from the authorities to the general masses from the above discussion we gather that mass media was used to mobilize the people for development causes however the audiences were considered passive in the process of social change paradigm shifts in development and emergence of alternative paradigm the epistemological paradigm shift has several implications and phases 
By the late 1960s and 1970s, the third world underdeveloped nations started questioning the validity of dominant paradigm. Now they were looking for models of development that were more people oriented, participatory and locally applicable. This led to the emergence of a new approach in development process gaining widespread acceptance. It was a realization that development results were not coming up as per the expectations in the countries which had been following the dominant paradigms made people think of alternative pathways to development. Critics from intellectual corners and several world events questioned the credibility of dominant paradigm. Rogers in 1976 identified four main events for the acceptance of an alternative paradigm. Concern over ecological issues and environmental pollution caused by heavy industrialization in developed countries. Overpopulation issue World oil crisis made the developing nations think that they can have their own strong position in the world market and it's, it eventually produced some wealthy developed nations and lastly the opening of international trade relations with China permitted the rest of the world to modify their development strategies. China became a modernization hub in two decades without any foreign support. All these events created alternative pathways in the World Forum with options of modifying and restructuring the approaches as per the needs of individual nations. The new alternative paradigm identifies a diversity of path towards self-defined and contextually suitable solutions that are based on the participation of local communities in the implementation of development strategies. Due to this shift, the local and non-government organizations and other important sectors of the civil society became the key stakeholders in national development policies and interventions. So from the above discussion, what we understand is that alternate paradigm considers factors such as grassroots development, increased political and social participation, integrated rural development, availability and usage of appropriate technology, achievement of basic needs by utilizing local resources, preservation of ecological balances, etc. It emphasizes on the concepts of self-reliance and self-development. In the alternate paradigm, the role of communication which was basically to inform and affect people was also being revised. The role of communication was further proposed to be a process of social interaction through balanced exchange of information leading to change. With this concept, the participatory dimensions in the alternate paradigm emerged. However, what is to be noted here is that the paradigm shift is characterized by diversity of the probable solutions in a developing nation and also by encouraging local participation. Participatory approach does not alone define the new paradigm but the multiplicity and plurality of possible solutions define it. This participatory aspect was missing in the dominant paradigm. The communication strategy emphasized by the alternate paradigm was mainly interpersonal channels with support from mass media. The functions of mass media were not only restricted to disseminate information but also to create awareness among the masses for development by persuasion. Interpersonal channels were utilized for communicating feedback on development activities. Globally, the scenario of development communication has changed considerably in the past four decades characterized by tremendous availability of new communication means 
active audience and demands of development contents. Thus, the communication strategies are planned as per the requirement of development. Communication model in dominant paradigm. The role of mass media was emphasized by communication scholars in the dominant paradigm of development. Lerner, Rogers and Schren argued that mass media can play the role of a catalyst in promoting development and social change by widespread information dissemination. The development scholars believe that the role of mass media is more than that of mobilizing people. It can also create, develop a sense of nationalism among the individuals. It was opined that for an effective development, people must not only focus towards social change, rather they should also be aware of the needs of the underprivileged and deprived. Here comes the role of mass media as they can expand the horizon and focus on people's interest. Scholars like Schrem in 1967 observed that the major function of media must be to transform the existing mindsets and perceptions of people as a change in the thought process is essential for growth. He also argued that establishment of mass media infrastructure is not sufficient for assuring change. All the above views was further critiqued from two sides. Firstly, the development community has not much considered the individual needs in the broader framework of national needs. And secondly, it ignored the importance of social systems in bringing social change. We learned from this module that reality is inconsistent and far more complex than what the paradigms of development suggest. The dominant social paradigm was described as a frame of reference for interpreting the world with a larger perspective. The dominant paradigm of development implemented a central influence in the field of development communication. It considered the development of any nation by the per capita income and economic modernization. Scholars supported as well critiqued the dominant paradigm and advocated the presence of advanced technology, material prosperity and political stability. We also came to know that the communication flow in dominant paradigm was basically linear and mechanistic. We observed how the alternate paradigm emerged during the 1970s. In the new paradigm, development practitioners and theorizers have added several dimensions from the perspective of the underdeveloped nations which were regrettably never stressed earlier. This module also established that communication practices accompanying the development goals were used to persuade people in the developing nations to adapt to the modern attitudes and technologies as a solution to overcome underdevelopment. This module also outlined the framework of the new means of communication technologies and how it has inevitably changed the dimensions and scopes of interpersonal communication. Thank you.